welcome to another episode of Business Conversations Uncensored. This is the place where we just say it as it is, where business entrepreneurship is concerned. And uh, the table is ready. My guests are here. Welcome, gentlemen, to the table. I was thinking about something this week, and I thought we need to talk about it. Because whenever somebody sets up a business or sets up something, one of the key things you're looking at is productivity. No one wants to set up something and at the end of the day you look back and it's not been productive. But I wonder, are there times you feel like you have been busy, but you look back and it seems like you have not been productive? I don't know if any of us have ever found ourselves in that space. I think it's full time for an entrepreneur. <laughs> what do you mean full time? An, an entrepreneur is always tired. Uh -huh. And uh, I, um, they're tired, mm -hmm. they're busy, they're unproductive and they're broke. Oh. Yeah. So it's it's not unusual. Uh -huh. So, but yet they don't realize that there's something they're actually doing wrong. So it's a syndrome. And this ought to be addressed and I'm glad that today we can we can actually jump in and address it. Okay. So yes, it's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> what are these things that keep people busy and yet they look back and they're not productive? It, it almost sounds like an oxymoron because you need to be busy to be productive but you've been busy and you look back and there's nothing much to do. Typically most entrepreneurs when they establish a business they start with an ideal where they want to go and then you get into doing things and you realize there's a lot of other uh, demands that come to, to you that you did not quite consider and so you're, you're quite busy and rightfully so but probably it's not progressing towards that ideal that you initially saw. Typically most entrepreneurs when they begin they are sort of a jack of all trades, there are a lot of things that need to be done and you have to do it single-handedly. So that can give you that sense of busy with activity but not quite much progress towards your goal. I don't know what you think Philip. We are living in a world of happy destruction. And uh, if you're not careful, you'll be very busy, but you can't show the substantial results. So you have to be very careful on what you're doing and how you're doing it. The, the, the aspect you brought up that, you know, so you're starting this thing, it seems like you're everything here. Yeah. You have to be the tea person. You have to be the butler to open the door for yourself. You're the CEO, you're everything. How then do you get to a place where you begin to distinguish between what is really urgent, what, what is really important, what, what, what is it that I do first? Because all these things want my attention. And I know you guys have been in that space where you began and you're everything. So how do you chambu all these things to know where to begin? I, I think probably we can split these entrepreneurs into two. Uh, the first one would be a side hustle professional. <laughs> uh, so he has an eight to five, but he sells this, this duvets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he has or she. They have something on the side. Yeah. So the thing is, just at their day job, they're tired already. So now they add something on top. So I'm not sure it would be fair to find a cure for them because the cure can be ambitious but we can find the cure for the second type of entrepreneur mm -hmm. and this is a guy who has jumped in and now this is all I'm doing I'm good at baking cakes yeah. and I went full time then I realized that it's not just about baking cakes I have to balance books mm -hmm. uh, I have to call suppliers I have to call clients, I have to market, I have to... And now they find themselves at a, at a quite an interesting place where literally 
they are overwhelmed by the things they are doing and it can be frustrating but it's not unusual when a business is starting you find yourself at that place and you quickly realize that you actually need extra hands nonetheless you can't afford those hands yeah so it's the balance of now deciding do i need a partner or do i shut down because shutting down is not an option mm. then this is the place where now people now start looking for people who they will work with but the unfortunate thing also is recruitment needs to be very intentional yeah it's not just a cure to tasks in hand mm. it has to be strategic and and that's a challenge as well there's something you said there that let's talk a bit about it because i've seen it several times where sometimes it's not that you may not be able to afford to bring somebody else on but you look at it as an extra expense that's unnecessary yeah why should i hire an accountant i can i will balance my books at at home in the evening you get why why do i need somebody to run around for me i'll, I'll do it myself because you're looking at the bottom line and you're thinking do i really want to give 60k 40k to somebody else to do this and i think i can do it is that a good way of thinking or is this where we begin to shoot ourselves in the foot the business needs somebody else you cannot run it alone because when you try to run it alone you become overwhelmed i think typically most most entrepreneurs would, would hardly work eight hours they'll do 14 hours upwards of 14 hours so as a an entrepreneur getting into the business you find you spend maybe the most productive part of your day doing what you'd call core activity yeah. and then at close of day five o'clock when everybody else is trying to make their way home is when now you get to do those other admin things mm -hmm. that need to be done but you're single-handedly doing it there needs to be books records needs to be kept returning phone calls preparing proposals whatever it is doing some bit of research because maybe you are out in the field just building a client base yes. so Entrepreneurs tend to do 14, upwards of 14 hours at the early stages of, of starting off whatever they are doing. Then they begin to slow down as they realize the business demands that I bring extra hands, mm -hmm. that I cannot be it all. But at that point, maybe the business has picked up to the point where they feel it's justifiable now to pay an extra person. But they could just start with a relative or a family member who is just doing it pro bono or just loves you enough to help you get started yeah. at, up to the point where they can begin to earn some money. Okay, in the, the, the previous episode, we, we, episodes, we talked about trust and I'm just wondering, is this a point where some of these trust issues kick in? Because this is my baby, I conceived the idea, I've started it and at the back of my mind I have this belief that no one can do it better than me because it's my vision. So is this also the other area where the whole issue of trust comes in? That do I really want to bring somebody else to handle this? Will they do it the way I am doing it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, for me, I see it as though it's part trust and part uh, insecurity. Okay. So the insecurity of I haven't gotten it yet mm -hmm. and someone is about to come in and question how I'm doing it. Yeah. Mm. So there's that hesitation of if I, I push it a little bit, I may get the flow, but right now I'm trying to find the flow. So then as well, what if they come and they realize that I don't have sufficient resources <laughs> yeah. to, to maintain them? What if they come in and they realize that I'm on fumes mm. uh, and this thing may or may not work? Yeah. Uh, what if they come in and now I have a new burden? So then people normally come into the business and you find that someone came into the business but their expectations are way off. Yeah. 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 And then now you feel like, okay, I need to manage. And when you're new into business, separating emotions from decisions is very hard. So it's your cousin, it's your sister, it's your aunt. And you're thinking, okay, I want it today. Let them just eat. Because if I try to explain to them, it's too complex yeah. and besides I don't want them to know that I'm not keeping afloat Wow you had talked about business development 
how does one get to a place where now you begin to prioritize? Because there are all these things that need to be done. How do I know which ones are the most important things that as the business owner I should focus on so that then I begin to get the freedom to delegate the rest to others? I remember for me as an entrepreneur starting, I was caught up with a very interesting thought. And that thought became a reality that I was caught in between two choices that I did want to make. And the choice was, regardless what I do, there is someone I have to disappoint. So I need to choose who. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise I may want to save all, but I can't. Yeah. And that was a hard lesson on learning how to say no. Yeah, because you say yes to something, you're technically saying no to something else. So now you find yourself at a point where you're like, okay, I have five people who have uh, a chance to be disappointed by myself. So which one do I please? Which one do I disappoint? And you have to choose and say, for these ones, it's a no. Even though I want, I can't. Yeah, for this one I will do, and even though these ones were an opportunity. I can't do all of them. I'll finish one. If they'll be there, I'll go to them. If they won't be there, it is what it is. And, and that way then, you find that you're building now a strategy. And the strategy says what I want and what I don't want. What I can service, what I can't service. And now bringing it to the idea of minds and hands. An entrepreneur is coming from a creative space and their biggest solution and biggest resource is their thought and in their thought they completed something important and they said if I actually deliver this service or this product then there is a demand on that the other end that will appreciate and reward me yeah. so then you realize okay as much as that is what I want what part what role do I play do I remain as a hand who builds a strategy and guides the ship? Or do I become the hands who, when you're, you're the hands in a business, you lose the bigger picture. By the time you're waking up like this, you've drifted. Yeah. You've gone astray and you realize that you can't be those two things as the business grows. Next time on Clean Money Monday. Uh, what I'm hearing is just a, a business, an entrepreneur who has a plan and wants to translate this plan into something results. In this case, results in business are measured in monetary terms. And so it's managing the many variables in that space to give you that desired result. When we start a business, we write something we call, where is the money? Uh, so where is the money is, uh, who are we targeting? Where are they? How old are they? Do they have the purchasing power? But sometimes I look at entrepreneurs and it seems like they are those who can easily look at the whole picture and determine this, for me as the business owner, this and this are priority, you know, and so they just do this and this. And later on you look back and it seems like their business is thriving and they are so productive.